The problem with uh, democratic politics is, and spin and 24-hour news and whatever, the person who inevitably comes to lead the country, and I think that questioner had, had, it, um, had it right, is going to have to reflect the strength of belief in the country itself. So if you went around like Christopher, bagging all the churches and anyone who believed, I think it'll be a long time before that happens, and I would be very surprised if it ever did happen. You could be an, a, an atheist, but I don't think you'd go around telling everyone that you thought everyone that was a believer was an idiot. Sally will have. I think there is... <laughs> there is... Um, I think there's just no way the Again, United States... Again, applause for a cheap point. That's encouraging. I think that there is no way the United States would elect a president uh, who was not a practising uh, Christian of some sort in my lifetime. I just cannot see it. I mean, interestingly, they, they were ready to elect a woman, and I think they, they would have if there hadn't have been a... Um, uh, an Obama there, but, but there's just no way. I, I, in fact, I think that's probably going backwards uh, in, in American culture at the moment. Australia, I don't think people could care less. Christopher. Well, my only point would be, um, I'll make a quick point about the United States. It, it, it's, a, it's a good thing that you, the atheists are not banned from holding the, the office, because we would have missed uh, Mr. Lincoln, for example. Um, and in my opinion, Mr. Jefferson and one or two other people probably worth having. But as late, as, late as, as late as the, as, uh, in England, uh, the life of uh, James Stuart Mill, in America, the life of Benjamin Franklin, they were quite well-known, publicly, you think, secure, confident, uh, professional thinkers who didn't say, didn't think it was advisable to let people know what they thought in public because that's how dangerous it could be in a pious regime. And it seems that, and all, all people of faith can apparently congratulate themselves upon it, that uh, faith still demands uh, professions of faith by people who don't hold it that are by definition hypocritical. So congratulations to religious opinion for bringing that beautiful thing about in what's supposed to be a secular democracy. Okay, no doubt we'll, uh, we're going to come back to uh, religious questions shortly, but you're watching Q&A, the unpredictable program where you get to ask the questions. If you'd like to ask a question in person, go to our website, register to join the studio audience. We'll change subjects now for a while. Uh, next question comes from William McKenzie. Is great talent an excuse for paedophilia? What are the panel's opinions on the Roman Polanski situation in Switzerland and America at the moment? Well, Ed. Can, can someone explain to me why... I actually don't understand the argument that he shouldn't be brought before a court. I just don't understand it. Right. I'm, mm. I, I'm, I'm happy for someone to convince me. Well, there's an argument um, in France. He's very talented, so he shouldn't therefore <laughs> face trial. No, but have you caught up right. with the news? It's all changed. Um, it's changed today, which was interesting. The, the French have backed off. Uh, Hillary Clinton has said it's a legal matter. Uh, the Pol Polish leader, I think, has backed off, even though he's married to someone who's supporting um, Polanski. And uh, a Hollywood serious communicator has a blog or something where the anti-Polanski uh, responses are running 100 to 1, and the New York Times has come out and argued against him, which is an interesting phenomenon. So maybe it's changing. Can, can I, say that I don't know Does why it wouldn't, would be interesting. I mean, I just can't believe they, they wouldn't argue that he should be tried. I, I was reading his autobiography last night, and uh, Polanski's account of, you know, making love to this young woman on Jack Nicholson's couch. It was just mm. a, yeah, no, um, so you know... So it, why has it taken so long? That's the reason. Well, that's, where the, that's where the talent <laughs> comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Rem, rem, rem arcu tetagusti, as they say in letter. You touch the point of the needle. He's already had the rewards of being talented. Thirty years on the lamb, after, I'll say it directly, uh, fornicating with and sodomizing a 13-year-old to whom he had given narcotics yeah. to lull her. Now, excuse me, you know, we do have our standards, even those of us who don't believe we're being supernaturally supernatural. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Although the, the, the really sad thing is that this woman has come out and, and said that the, the trial by media um, that she's going to have to endure uh, in this is, is, she believes, will be worse than the actual crime, which is, uh, it, it's, it's a really sad uh, and terrible tale, this. But that's his fault too. That's yes, absolutely it is. It is. And, and, and he still needs to be tried, but it's awful that she's going to have to um, suffer. Uh, so she doesn't want it to define her whole life. For and, and, this and yet he has to be... Tried. But, but it was his lawyers back. that brought this back mm. into the arena, mm. and so in a sense this has been all brought about because late last year his lawyers tried to get through a loophole in the law to have his charges dropped, and of course that then set the prosecution out 
and running. Uh, can, for, I, can, for I, can, I make, can I make a point and, uh, and, yes. and a sort of admission here? And uh, I'm almost oh, sorry, surprised. By, I, 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 well, I'm almost surprised by the admission, which is Bring that. On the uh, well, uh, it's a simple one, really. That I've actually uh, been to see several of his films uh, in that period. I've watched others on DVD. And, and when you think about it carefully, um, is that somehow supporting? You mean we, we'd have been deprived of the films if you? In, uh, in the no, first place. No, not at all. I'm simply saying I wonder mm. why I didn't think about this at the time. Mm. Oh, well, because we're all capable of keeping two sets of books. I mean, that's part of our nature. Well, I can see that I'm not the only one. Um, <laughs> the, he, just for discussing this subject, a couple of years ago, my magazine, Vanity Fair, was sued by Mr. Polanski from Paris in London. Not in, not in America, where he thought the jurisdiction would be easier on him. He didn't even have to appear in person, because he thought that might be risky. He made a video deposition. We claimed he had no reputation to defend. He walked away with a lot of our money on a libel judgment, saying this couldn't be discussed. So I would say, screw him. <laughs> <laughs> and I would add... And I would add, screw him for a chain. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Britton. It's his turn. Going back to the question, I mean... What about the 13-year-old girl? Mm -hmm. I well, mean, she's saying no. Uh, but go back to then and, I mean, to speak of, you know, the talent of the one who is the perpetrator, what about the talent and what's happened to the victim? And what the law has got to be about is protecting the victim, whether or not she's talented. And if the perpetrator be talented, well, it counts for nothing. That's what justice according to law has to be Although, about. sadly, you know, the stuff up of this means that it, it hasn't protected her at all. It, it's gone on for 35 years and it could have all been yeah. over. There's a, there's a broader point as well that's not about the Polanski case, and this is where I get in my lawyer mode. It's about the integrity of the justice system. You cannot, I think, as a justice system, tolerate or reward someone just because they managed to get away with it for 30 years and say, well, oh, it was a long time ago. Well, no. There is a reason that the criminal law doesn't have a statute of limitations that applies to it by and large. Um, and, and that is because we deem crime to be of such significant import that it must be punished irrespective of, of how, what, what time has elapsed between the, the condition of the offence and, and the finding of, of the offender. There is, imagine I, I what just, we would say if it was a bishop. Well, of course. But I just cannot, I, I just no. for probably, a life probably, of what no, everyone, right. probably what everyone on the panel has, actually has been saying. So, uh, you're watching Q&A, the live and interactive forum where you ask the questions. Our next question comes from Bazda Yildic. Uh, why is it that the Islamic country, Iran, is the threat to the peace in the world and not the Zionist? Uh, is it America's support of Israel? Well, hundreds of people are getting killed uh, in Gaza and West Bank every day. Uh, with the support of America. The Israel-Palestinian war has been going on for 61 years and we are not actually looking at what, um, what is actually happening and we're fearing about what is not happening. We're fearing about something that hasn't happened. Okay, uh, Sally Warhouse. <laughs> And I might add, by the way, we had a number of questions asking why Iran's nuclear program and not Israel's mm. is the illegal one. Mm. Mm. Um, look, uh, this is, it's, it's, it's a tragedy. I, I, I think with Israel and Palestine, it, 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 it's something where it, it almost takes half an hour to sort out what, what has to happen. Uh, you know, the Palestinians need a state. Um, Israelis need to feel secure. Um, but it feels uh, like that's, it, it, it's just so far away. Um, I think that part of the problem is obviously the delicacy of the Israeli coalition. Um, I mean, I, I don't know um, beyond what I've just said that it, it's simple what has to happen, but how you make it happen and how you...